knows? Hello, hello. Um, five minutes late, so thank you for your patience. Uh, thanks for everybody for joining us. We kind of rushed putting this thing together this morning, and uh, I don't know if it shows, but we're all very riled up. And when I say uh, we all, I mean Blake, who's usually in the mirror right there, and me. Uh, today we are going to do something that I've never done before, which is we're going to take this uh, Schneider Cinelux and open it up and uh, try to reduce internal reflections by using a flocking material. So um, I'm going to just wait for more people to come in. Um, in the meantime, uh, yeah, I really had to take a break last week. It was just too many things going on and I appreciate that you guys are all chill and being like, hey, be healthy and stuff. So that was great. Thank you. Thank you for your understanding and your patience. Uh, I see that Lucas is here. He's saying, has it started? And I really hope um, it has. Oh, yeah, Evan Burns just joined as a member. Thank you. Thank you so much. This is amazing. This is like the best starting for a stream I ever had, I think. Um, and yeah, what else? What else happened since then? Yeah, the Vazen 85 video came out and that turned out pretty sweet. Um, I got a lot of comments uh, for people <laughs> uh, saying that the skin tones look much better now that I'm shooting on the S5 and that the whole presentation for the channel is looking better. And it's a combination of lighting and the camera. So maybe I'll break that down in an upcoming video. What else? Um, Evan, you joined just in time. Uh, members are going to get access to an early, uh, not an early stream, an early video this Friday on how to build the focus. Because uh, all of the month of October is focused, focused, haha, <laughs> on single focus solutions. So we're going to start with Lucas's focus. Uh, members get a tutorial on how to build it. And then on Monday, I'm doing a full review for it. Um, then next week, I'm building another focuser, a cheaper and grittier one that was sent by someone that was just watching live streams here. Um, then I'm talking about the Rapidos FVD 35A and 16B. And that's kind of what you should be expecting for the month of October. Um, what else? What else am I missing? I always feel like I rush into this and like, ah, information, information, information. And then I run out of things to say. Um, okay, so I went over introductions. I talked about what happened. I talked about what's coming. And yeah, a little bit more of today. So I guess we got 17 people, I uh, got 15 people, people are just bailing on it. Uh, if you wanna hit that like button, that's great. If you wanna subscribe to the channel cause you're not a subscriber yet, there's a lot more anamorphic stuff in the previous videos and future videos as well. This is kind of the theme and uh, thanks for joining. So today, uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna flock the insides of this lens. I'm gonna take it out of this rig so it can more properly show it. We also have this whole thing running through HDMI into the computer so you can see through the lens and the camera when things uh, happen. In front of here, I gruesomely taped a diopter just so we can have focus within the room so this is a 0.5 achromatic diopter. It's very dirty. I should have cleaned it before, but didn't. And this is a Schneider ES uh, Cinelux. And I don't know if you can see, depending on the angle, some of the insides of the lens. Let me see if through here, do you see me squeezed? Do you see me squeezed now? Yes. <laughs> um, the insides of the lens are a little bit uh, reflecting, <laughs> as you could see in my squeezed picture through the phone. 
And the idea is to add a material inside of the lens that's going to prevent that light from bouncing around. Um, my main goal is to reduce veiling glare. So I'm going to quickly show what veiling glare looks like if you're unsure about it. And um, we're also going to look at performance to see if this lens is tack sharp or if my markers are off. So I put a chart over there and punch it in here. My chart is too close, I think. Yeah, my chart is a bit too close. So this is roughly two meters from the camera to the chart and you can see it is sharp enough and there's no direct light hitting this camera. But as soon as I turn over here towards my main light, you can see this whole halo of white. This is veiling glare. This is reflections from the glass elements, the, the edges of the glass elements, but mainly from uh, the inside of the lens. And that happens because it's a smooth metallic surface that light just hits and, and goes straight through straight into the sensor. Um, the Koa and Elmoscope have a lot of that, a lot, a lot, a lot of veiling glare that's also gonna show up in the review for the focus. And it really annoys me how veiling glare takes over the shot. It's just like, boom, everything is white. The corners are white. You didn't have vignetting, but now I can see perfectly all the corners of the picture. Um, so what I'm hoping is to open this lens, put this flocking material inside and close it back up, see if it's sharp, see if we succeeded, if things are better or if things are not better and go from there. Um, if you use premium adapters of some sort, I know Metabones does it. Um, a lot of their adapters are flocked so they have this kind of soft velvety thing on them to prevent the adapters from creating more flares behind the lens which i think is great um and i've seen some some people i think tim linson and lucas have successfully flocked lenses before so we're gonna see how it goes uh First, I'm going to shine a light inside of the lens directly in like a more controlled way. So this is a flashlight and I'm going to put it straight into the barrel here of the Cinelect. Wow, great. It's all white. Let's dial it down a bit. Okay. I'm also going to roll on this clip. Uh, yep. Just so I can have this reference for later. Uh, nothing is sharp. I can see, you can see the golden from the lens itself. Uh, hopefully that's going to be diminished, but we got a reference here. Let's see how it hits from the sides. Yeah, the Cinelux is not the most flaring lens. You can see a little bit of purple flares there. And from the other side. And the idea is after I'm done, I'm gonna repeat these. And we're going to look at it and be like, wow, this was game changing, man. Everything is different. There's no internal reflections to this. Okay, so cutting here on the panty. And hello. Uh, hello to the people who are joining in now. You're kind of getting us halfway or maybe I'm just going very fast through this. Um, this seems like a perfect moment to say that this channel does not make any money. <laughs> All the money that we make comes from YouTube ads, which are annoying, and your donations and memberships. So if you want us to continue, uh, Blake and I were just discussing last week that we either got to find some source of income or chill down because uh, the pace we're pushing forward at the channel is not really working. We're kind of killing ourselves here. Um, so if you're on the fence about joining the channel, this is a good time. Uh, I'm going to change what you get with the memberships. The members are going to get more early access content 
in comparison to non-members and you always have a easier way to contact me by being a member you if you also just want to make a donation you can send money through paypal uh, put the address here it's not even typing paypal.me slash i think this is me yep and you can send it through there or you can send a super chat which is a donation through youtube's own system um and we're very appreciative because it helps us just like cutting this time slot in the day to do this uh, as well as edit videos, shoot more footage and everything else. Uh, the link did not go live. I love it. Uh, well, okay. Uh, let's move this camera off to the side for a little bit. I'm going to turn it off because we don't want the batteries to die. And let's look at this. Sydney Lux. So I'm looking here through the back. Where's the camera? Looking through the back and there's two screws here. Uh, I'm hoping that that's gonna be the way in. I also don't have gloves, which I should have uh, to avoid getting grease on the glass. So I'm just gonna deal with cleaning things later. And the main challenge that I see right now is one, getting this thing out and having the glass come out that would be great the second part is aligning this glass because if things are misaligned performance dips horribly that's kind of the reason i have a chart there so we can uh, do that and yeah we can really mess up with image quality by doing this and not adjusting the lens properly once we're done also just Taking the time here, this uh, support system is designed and provided by Lucas. The, you should check his his channel and his his material, uh, the grabhole.de. Uh, the front element slots in, not sure if that's easier to go through. The real element will require alignment. Okay, good to know. Thank you, Evan. Um, the front element slots in, I see. Maybe we'll have to change the entire approach. Uh, but yeah, this lens support is made by Lucas. And then this is the quick release clamp system. It's also all 3D printed. And this thing is amazing. I'm still missing some step rings to make proper use of it, but I can't wait. Um, it's a cheaper, lighter alternative to Rapido's um, rigging system okay so evan's suggesting that we go through the front and i guess that's what we're gonna do i'm gonna take out this tape and get properly started onto this um while you guys are there uh could you hit that like button for me please thank you appreciate it okay wish me luck never done this before kind of concerned all right so there's four screws four little screws here and two bigger screws here um anybody have any inside there's four more screws on this side and i'm wondering if this is what holds this part or if by taking this out I can just take off a shell and be done. Yeah, I'm thinking that's the approach that I'm going to take. I'm going to try to take the front. If anybody's got any insight, please stop me before I mess up. If you got no insight and you just want to send some support. Unscrewing screws, yep. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I believe in my hair. Here we go. This week's video is also the result of a conversation I had with Blake last week where I was like, dude, I feel I always have to have the answers when presenting content on this channel because you don't go to YouTube to watch people try things and not succeed. You go there because you want to get an answer for a problem. Wow, that's a very long screw. So I we just embrace that things can go wrong and tests cannot perform as expected and 
Uh, it's going to be a part of the process. Just uh, learning as we go. So if that tests your patience, uh, maybe the live streams are not for you. But if you enjoy people trying to figure things on the go and being scared of the results but still facing it, uh, then yeah, definitely join us here. This is the place, place to be. Well, Evan, what a surprise. Boom. Okay, this was uh, much easier than I thought. <laughs> Um, okay, so we took out the front ring. I kind of need to lift this safely. And I don't want to just tap it onto my hand. But I'm going to use this cardboard here. I'm going to put this here. And the element did not come out. Okay. I wonder. I wonder what's next. Because I'm assuming these screws are gonna do the travel. I wonder if I just like, try to get it from the side, if that's gonna come off or not. Or if it's gonna be this carrier here on the side that allows the whole thing to travel. So we're gonna find out. I'm gonna try to get the edge a little bit and uh, we'll see this. It could also be glued, right? Glue is that thing that people use. Hmm. It does look like it's glued. I don't know what this is. Hmm. Maybe I can take out these. Allen, Allen screws, and um, remove this whole black part. Let's see. Let's see if this is this big or not. Okay, let's see. Side ones. Okay, I love that we got votes for every option here. Uh, here we go. This one. So I am traveling it outwards now, mm -hmm. and it's reached the limit, and this is the lock screw, so this just comes right off. Wow, very long screw here. Um, not a lot. No, this I feel like I'm pushing it. Okay, I'm gonna put this one back just so I know where everything is still going. And yeah, I'm gonna move on to the side one. Let's try the side. I use this and I use this. There's a little bit of glue on this one. And these are very long screws. Okay, I'm glad that this glue is the type that you just snap instead of the one that is a pain to take out. Uh, maybe held some glue, yeah. Yeah, I think it might be held with some glue indeed. Okay, so this is, the side screws are out. This is not looking like any different still. Yeah, it still only comes to about the same. 
distance here. Nothing rotates. Nothing else moves. We go back all the way in. How does this? I also can't see anything happening on the inside of the lens. So we'll see how that goes. Hey, Charles, how's it going? Good to see you here. Yeah, I don't see any difference here, any progress. I'm going to reset all of these screws and go for the rear element attempt. Let's see how that goes. One back in. Not really relevant, but I was able to align my Dialyscope 16 by unscrewing a set screw on the rear element. Ha! Huh. Maybe uh, this will give me a similar option, hopefully. Um, that is kind of what I'm planning to do anyways. Uh, hey, Tomas, nice to see you, man. Finally, it's been a while. Um, fun fact, fall started yesterday, and uh, Vancouver is also known as Raincouver. So fall started yesterday. Yesterday was still a little sunny. It was nice. But then today, which is like official fall, we got rain, and it's a lot of rain. And the forecast is 100% rain tomorrow, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and it just keeps going. So, um, yeah, it's good. So much fun to be in Vancouver. <laughs> all right. I'm just putting back all of these screws that I took out. So I don't bump him accidentally. Let's see. What else? This is like the slowest chat. Nobody's asking about Siri. Nobody's asking about Vazen. Amazing. Uh, speaking of that, I got Vazen to ship me the 28 and the 40 again. And I'm hoping to compare that to the Siri 35 and 50 to show how different those two lenses are because people just keep saying that they're the same. Um, or just like, ah, oh, it's a 28 and it's a 40 mil. What's the difference? What's the difference? So hopefully I'll be able to compare both of them and tell you what's the difference. Uh, Evan's saying I painted black ink over the whole front plate of the Cinelux. It reflected so much gold. Yeah, uh, I, I think that's a pretty good idea, to be honest. Um, and this came out much more easily. Uh, especially around the edges or the internal edges. And I got a special black paint here that if this process works today for the Cinelux, I'm hoping to repeat it for the Elmo 2 but with different paint um, as a way to blacken the insides of it better. Okay, so the glass is slanted. I was just able to lift this up. Oh, there's a double mechanism in here. So there's another thingy here to hold the glass. Wow, this is so pretty. And um, hopefully <laughs> nothing will collapse. Scary sounds, oh my god. <laughs> one screw is out. There's another one here. I'm gonna bring this up closer so you can see what I'm looking at. So I took out one screw from here. I'm gonna take another one from here. Hopefully this is gonna be very easy to align, especially if I can take out this plate as is, instead of taking the element out by itself. Um, <laughs> Uh, Trevor, well, I've given up phase in after 8K announcement. Yeah, that, it's pricey, man. Um, but I love that 85. Gosh. Ah, fuck. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, making me scared. No. Oh, man. This screw is not going to come off. This one, one screw left. But I can see how the element is held, which is great. I just need a bigger screwdriver because it started to strip. Uh, what do you guys do when this thing happens? When you start to, the screw starts to turn in a shape that you don't really love. Yeah, this is what I'm getting here. Um, some tape and alignment marks on the lens. Yeah, like under the screw, there's another platform. Oops, uh, under the screw, there's another golden platform that I can see. So I'm sure this is going to go back into the inside of the lens. Uh, it's more of a matter of being able to take it out. And I can see it's moving. It's just this one screw that's going to give me a nightmare. Why? Ah, oh, man. What do I do here? Should I try like a blow dryer kind of thing? Open to suggestions. Um, uh, regarding Zelmas and Vazen, I would not consider a Zelmas yet. They have like two sets out and the only information out there about them is Max's video. So I don't feel very confident. Um, drop of acetone. Weld and drill. Heating, maybe blue or lighter fluid. Yeah, I got all of those options. How comfortable am I using all of them? Haha. Uh because -huh. um, acetone also dissolves the cement in the glass. If this is here. Is the one side like getting torqued on now? Maybe putting a screw and untightening both at the same time? Oh yeah, that's that's a great idea. Let's try that. Let's do that. So we're gonna put one back and try to even out the pressure. Maybe that's what's making things worse. But this one is like already not helping. Like there's there's not that much play, but I know I'm close to to failing hardcore. Yeah, it's not gonna work. Yeah, this is not gonna go. All of our hopes and dreams. Uh, rubber band. Yeah, I've seen that rubber band tip so many times. Every time I try, it does not work. Um, hair blow dryer. Uh, the screw that I took out, I don't think it has residue mm, it has some but it's not blue it's just white it's not a lot uh also let's try the blow dryer and then uh, yeah but the screw is really not gonna help man just this morning, I was like, hmm, I gotta learn how to tap threads and uh, cut screws. Because any day now, I'm gonna run into it. And uh, the day has come. Just when I was complimenting the, the, the glue, that's easy. Also, have you ever... I, I'm gonna go in and get the blow dryer. It's right behind Blake, so I'll be back in a second. Also, have you noticed... I'm gonna conclude this stuff when I get back. <laughs>
So two to three pins? Yeah. How long is this cord? Is it long enough? Oh. <laughs> okay, it is long enough. We're back. I don't know if this is just my experience, but every time I have to take out screws, it's always the last one that messes it up. And it's not the first. It's not like, oh, sometime you just mess up in the middle and then you have to give up. It's always the last one. Like, I've taken out, I've taken out all the screws in this thing except the last one. Uh, so I'm just going to organize things so they don't fly everywhere. Oh, wait. No, never mind. It's just the blue light. Okay, here we go. Uh, sounds going to be garbage. <sighs> Very good call there <laughs> on taking this thing off. Here we go. One. I need to take that too. This is a good thing of doing this live. Because a lot of my shortcomings are prevented from by you guys pointing out things that I'm overlooking because I'm under pressure. Here, it's under pressure to perform. Oh, we'll get somewhere with this. Okay, so this is out, everything is out. Don't go anywhere. It's out. And uh, yeah, here we go. Bye, audio. stuff let's see how this goes now um i'm gonna have to get a flat head because the teeth are not long enough to reach anymore nope smaller Ah, this is not going well, man. <laughs> ah. I'm going to be able to take the screw out, but I'm not going to be able to put it back. We have failed. <laughs> this is not gonna come out. I need to... I'm gonna bring it in close to the camera so you guys can see what's going on. 
Uh, uh, we can also use this other camera. Which one? This one? Yeah. Oh yeah, I can do that. Well, I can just take it. Yeah. I'm just turn it on. Oh! <laughs> Ah, now the blow the blow dryer is gonna make me uh, sneeze. But yeah, I'm gonna have to cut new tap new things onto this. If you can see, I'm gonna make a better angle. I have a drill. It's just the small things. So this is free spin now. Yeah, small screw extractor. Could you send me a link to that? Uh, I'd love to try that. Maybe it's going to be the subject of next week's live stream. Um, yeah. I'm going to try to... Yeah, no. This is not going to go anywhere. I need to either cut another thing into here so I can use a flathead uh, or get it out some other way. So today's experiment we have learned that tiny screws made of soft materials suck big time and they do not work. Um, if anybody's got suggestions or pointers for a small screw extractor uh, that would be great. I'm gonna try that out. Uh, otherwise, I might just go to a camera shop, see if they're open, and take this lens and see if they can take out this screw and retap this hole. But, um, yeah. Grab it works. Okay, I, it's, I, I see myself getting a new thing from Amazon, new package from Amazon in the upcoming days. <laughs> Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Do you guys have any other ideas? The front is definitely glued. Uh, and I don't know what to do about that. But yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, even as is, this lens is worth more than that because it's perfectly tuned. I did not get far enough to mess up the lens. <laughs> uh, so the plan is to figure out how to get it in. And I'm not gonna ship this lens out, guys. Uh, I appreciate it, but uh, the whole idea is to learn during the process. So whatever I do, I gotta do it here and do it live so you guys can learn from me or with me more like it <laughs> uh so yeah i'm gonna put back this screw and uh yeah i'm open to ideas or suggestions or both on the upside there's not a lot of room for things going wrong <laughs> in next week's live stream so we're gonna be talking about streak flares and i'm gonna start posting about it pretty soon so you can tune in uh i'm just gonna put this back sort of how it was so i can resume later without getting a ton of dust in here um yeah i'm gonna get the you screw the focus ring past infinity doesn't the front just focus uh just pop out i unscrewed it to infinity or like to close focus which is i mean hold up i've unscrewed it out all the way that's what i did and uh where's the other bit and it it, it locks it doesn't go past so I'm going again, da, 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 da. it stops at infinity and I already took out the lock screw and it still stays in there. I don't want to 
push it forward because I don't want to possibly break a screw inside of the lens. That's a uh, next level bad. Um, so yeah, don't know. Open to uh, work suit damage, strip screw tractor set, don't think. Amazon link worked, yeah. Uh, sad, sad indeed. Uh, I got grab it. Let me see if the link was just held up. No, it's still here. Uh, yeah, pretty sad. Still, we made it to 45 minutes. Um, I'm just trying to get this going. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Kind of disappointing. Very disappointing. Um, let's see. Starhead. No, the it's not about a surface like. I made it in a way that the whole, the screw top is now a cone. So there's nothing to grip. Um, it really sucks. And the next thing that sucks is that, where do you source these tiny screws? Like if I want to replace it, where do I find a new one? Um, I don't know, these are not standards, I think. Or in my past experience, they weren't. Um, so it's not like, oh yeah, I just need a new M6 screw. Uh, it's more like uh, I need this tiny custom screw or retap the hole for another non-standard screw. I don't know, it's just a little frustrating. Uh, is the 5E similar to the Cinelux? Yes and no. I would say they are different. They perform different, they focus different in the sense of how the lens is built and uh it's that uh justin no sam is asking if the a7s3 has clear image zoom i don't know man i don't even have i sold my a7s2 this week so i don't even have it anymore um i'm not getting the a7s3 i'm staying with panasonic for now so I don't know. I don't have an answer. <laughs> All right. Da -da -da. Yeah, just another thing more to buy. The 5E is easier to open. It works the same as a code on the inside. Let's do blow dry for the rest of the stream. All right, let's do that. <laughs> uh, in Germany, there's something called, I don't know how to pronounce it. My fix your problem. Metric is standard. The problem is the screws are not, or like they're metric. I don't even know how to explain the problem. Like, where do I find these tiny screws? They're not small enough. Um, Look at saying I've used the Dremel to cut a larger flathead into stuck screws, coas, and use the large flathead. Works great. I get replacements from my local screw dealer. Um, yeah. Oh, look at that. Max is here. Hey, Max. You just came just in time to watch me uh, fail at this. Uh, I'm going to join your stream tomorrow. So I hope yours goes well, because you know you don't need to rely on third-party screws. Um, yeah, I just gotta figure out how to get this out. I would Dremel a hole into this, but it's so close to the glass. Um, might still do it, uh, we'll see. I need clear weather a little bit so I can just go outside and not have metal shavings everywhere. Uh, yes, Max has a streaming tomorrow, right? Tomorrow at 9 p.m. Central Europe time, which translates to like noon here. So I'm definitely going to be there. Uh, Lucas Singh, Sanker 5E, there's M2.5 screws, or at least they work. What's MC Mastercar? All the screws. What is that? What does that mean? Help. Uh, screw doctors. Uh, glue that glues the screwing bit onto the screw. Oh, man. Okay. Yeah, I've seen people say to use just super glue. And I'm like, I'm not putting super glue near this lens. Um, yeah. So I got I to gotta either cut a, a new groove into this stripped screw so I can get in and uh, or I got to drill the screw out we're gonna figure that out 
over the next week and I'm going to be posting updates. Uh, oh, they have metric and imperial. All the screw. I'm going to have to write that down. Let me see. Sure. Car. All right. Uh, watchmaker screws in different sizes. Yeah. Do you think blackening the outside glass, glass edges would cut enough of the veiling glare? I don't, at least not to the level I was planning on doing with this. It might just, it might improve things, but not hardcore. My nose is just like, hello, it's time to run. Um, oh, I see MC MasterCard. They have everything. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna look into it and see how this goes. Uh, and yeah, buy a screw extractor set and try to figure out how that works. Super glue doesn't do it. Yeah, I I wouldn't do it anyway. So <laughs> uh, they are available in Canada, so that's good. All right. This and the 5e e to two times ratio. Uh, the thing with squeeze factor is at infinity, yes, true two times. When you start to get closer, not two times anymore. And uh, it's just because of how the lenses focus. Uh, okay, so since we're here and this didn't quite work, um, feel free to shoot any random questions that you have. Uh, Blake and I are working on putting together some much more intense content aimed at like history of anamorphic and early Hollywood and how the lenses came to be. So if you're interested in that, subscribe now, subscribe before you head out and members will hear more about that pretty soon. So join. Uh, sushi versus lens geekery is a tough choice. How is that? Oh, okay. <laughs> like, what is going on in this conversation? Yeah. Okay. I think uh, this is it. I think this is it for today. Yeah. Everybody like the video. Everybody subscribe. I'm gonna try and solve this new problem that I created for myself entirely for free. And uh, hopefully you get to learn something from my mistakes. Uh, yeah, that's it. Like, do you feel we can add anything? Uh, Trevor's asking if I'm considering picking up the Vazen, who do you think will, will actually buy that lens? I think people that shoot on the F6 Z cam, um, anybody who's trying to step into like a larger full frame size kind of thing is going to be interested or larger than that. Um, but yeah, I don't know. At eight thousand dollars, it is cheaper than Atlas. Atlas is nine thousand now, so it is cheaper. Atlas doesn't cover full frame. Uh, you can own it, and it really doesn't feel that tight on on full frame. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. <laughs> All right. So Ben is asking if there's any reason for coloring the aperture discs with a sharpie as opposed to painting it. No, I just had Sharpies and Sharpies are cheap, so I went with it. Uh, Max is uh, saw the video today. We could do a stream focusing principles. Yes, I'd love to do that, Max. Uh, I'd love to do that when you have the time and I have the time. Let's uh, maybe figure this out. Uh, not next week. It's sometime during October because I'm going to be talking about variable diopters a lot. And we can talk about focus in general if you're... If you're interested, if you're free, I'd love to do that. Uh, for people who don't know Max, Max is making, is running Exo Optic and he's making rehousing kits or partial rehousing kits and full rehousings for his Chroma lenses. And his stuff is top notch. Um, so yeah, he's, he's someone that I can trust about. Hey, this lens focuses that way. Um, so yeah, that's it, I guess. All right. Uh, thank you guys for joining. I hope you had fun. I had some fun, not as much as I expected. A lot of stress. Now I got to figure this out. And I'll see you on Friday for members. 
Monday for you all. And then Wednesday, we're back with something else. Mchutu fehadungs, and I'll see you then. Bye-bye.